Welcome to Electronics on the Floor, where we'll talk about neon globes. Unlike ordinary light bulbs or LEDs, neon bulbs require high voltage but very low current. That's particularly useful for certain applications. For instance, running a light to determine the presence of mains power, or for some RF applications, where you want to see that RF is present at a high impedance part of a circuit, antenna or feed line. When you look inside a neon lamp, you'll see two thick poles, thicker than the wires going to the circuitry. As you increase the voltage across them, Nothing happens until you get to about 90 volts. That's when it breaks down and you see illumination from the globe. Only a very small amount of current is required for that to happen, making neons very efficient. If you want the neon to detect mains voltage, then you need to put a resistor in series with the neon lamp. For our voltage here in Australia of around 240 volts, a resistor of around 220 to 270 K is sufficient. Like an LED, if you don't have the series resistor, then you risk damaging the neon. So you order some neons, you decide you want to experiment with them. The next problem is how do you generate the 90 volts required? If you've got a mains power transformer like this, possibly from an old piece of equipment, then you're in luck because the mains transformer can be used backwards. Instead of stepping the mains voltage down from 240 volts, or 120 as it is in North America, down to say 9 or 12 volts, we connect the transformer the other way around. Then we can step a low voltage AC up to a high enough voltage to fire the neon. And by the way, the neon will work like a light globe on AC or DC. It doesn't matter. Here's a transformer to try, 240 volts primary with various tapping points for the secondary, between 0 and 15 volts. If yours is different from that then it's not that critical. Anyway you can see the red leads are the high voltage mains input labelled as primary and I've got them connecting to a terminal block and then our neon. Unlike LEDs, neons are non-polarised. We'll just get a 9 volt battery and put it intermittently across the secondary connections. Depending on the transformer you've got, you may need to experiment so you've got the turn to ratio right to generate a sufficient voltage to energise the neon. This is the 0 volt tap and this is the 6.7 volt tap. You can see that the neon is intermittently on. Keep an eye on the neon. Notice the light. The important thing to note is that it's intermittent. Just because we're using DC here it's not able to continuously produce AC. It's only the transients when you'd connect and disconnect the battery. If we look at the poles of the neon a bit closer you'll see that when I connect the battery seems to be the left that energizes first and when I disconnect it it's the right that is on last. If you want the neon to be on continuously rather than when I apply and remove DC power then you need a low voltage AC source. Such a suitable low voltage AC source is this power adapter. Notice on the back it says 9 volt AC, 1 amp. That's somewhat unusual. Around 90% of power adapters give you DC rather than AC. They are unsuitable for this experiment. But if you can find an AC one, doesn't matter if it's 9 volts, it could be 6 volts, could be 12 volts, then you'll be able to do this and other experiments. Now back inside where there's a bit less light, and we're trying the 9 volt AC plug pack onto the transformer, connected so that the primary is high voltage and able to light the neon.
What if you don't have a suitable low voltage AC supply? The other alternative is to use audio to drive the neon. All you need is an audio signal source, for instance, this drone machine, though a stereo system should also work. At low and medium levels, the neon won't light. Another way you can generate enough voltage to run a neon is to build a simple DC to AC inverter. I'm using the same power transformer as before. The important thing is that it's got a center tap. In this case, it's got various taps at various voltages. The important ones for this experiment are a zero volt tap at the end of the winding, a 15 volt tap at the other end of the secondary winding and a 7.5 volt tap which is in the middle. That connection is important because that's where you apply DC power to. Anyway we've got a 9 volt battery we'll just connect and as you can see the neon is lighting. Not as bright as before but it's definitely working. The inverter comprises a small signal transistor, a BC548, used basically as an oscillator. There's a resistor there, I used 150k, and three capacitors, 100 nanofarad, 10 nanofarad, and 40 microfarad. I got this idea off a nuts and bolts website item. The values are slightly different, I just used what I had but it worked first time. It is very low current, but that is fine for a neon type circuit where the current drawn is very small. If you already had an AC source, like I demonstrated before with the nine volt AC plug pack, another approach is to build a diode voltage multiplier. You might actually need several stages of that circuit to get up to your 90 volts or so you need for your neons. Another obvious use for a neon is helping to tune up a magnetic loop. Because the voltages at the capacitor end are high, certainly more than enough to fire up a neon bulb when it's resonant. Ooh. The voltage across the capacitor of the loop is high and the neon draws so little current that you only need one lead connected for the neon to light up. Oh. This has been our look at neon globes. They're cheap, interesting and worth experimenting with. Grab a few, try a few circuits and let us know in the comments how you go. <laughs> If you want to get more from Amateur Radio, check out my ebooks, hand carried QRP antennas, minimum QRP, 99 things you can do with Amateur Radio, and getting back into Amateur Radio. They're available in electronic form for around $5 US. Just visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.